Já, góðan daginn, velkomin í hina Reykjavík. Í dag verður þátturinn á ensku og þess vegna ætla ég að halda áfram bara núna. Hello and welcome to Other Reykjavík, where we hear the voices of those who uh, do not have space in the mainstream media. In the light of the horrific, horrific fire at Bræðraborgarstígur, we have reached out to Kaja Baleiko and Victoria Joanna Ginter, who organized a demonstration last Sunday. Uh, welcome. Uh, and I, my name is Danny. I am a deputy city council member in Reykjavík for the Socialist Party. And with me is also Löyve Olafsdóttir, who uh, you are well from these uh, shows. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, I just wanted to ask if you can tell us a bit about what happened and why you organized the demonstration. And if we just begin with Kaya. Hi, hello. Thank you for the invitation. So um, basically this fire tragedy, regardless the reason of the fire, just show us the truth about like um, housing conditions and uh, practices on the labor market. But that was truth actually known from very long time and it was just ignored by many. There are multiple situations which foreigners are facing on the Icelandic labor market and not only lower wage, uh, wages, um, job offers below our qualifications, um, housing conditions, unpaid over hours, higher expectations regarding our availability and um, our dedication, and also lack of contracts, but also um, stuff which should be actually done in more professional way, like help from unions. I believe that um, they want to do as best as they can, but there are no clear procedures. And very often we are getting totally different answers when we are reaching unions. You can call three times regarding the same case and every time you will get the different information. And this uh, accident which happened was very tragic and it was just the last drop which moved the crowd actually. I was very surprised. I didn't expect that so many people will come. Yes, thank you. Uh, Victoria, do you want to add something to this? I would actually, Kaya did a great job in describing the situation pretty much. Yeah, and I, <clears throat> I want to ask, uh, like this is not an isolated incident, right? No. And, and no. how big is this problem really? Uh, do you know, Victoria? Mm, so, um, to, to my attention, this was brought by the Pirate Party. Uh, when I first encountered them, uh, when they asked me to help them with a case of about 20 Polish people uh, that have been brought to Iceland by uh, a, work, a working agency uh, to work in a fishing factory uh, up in the north and uh, they were placed in containers uh, and then uh, their salaries were, of course, black. They weren't registered. Nobody paid taxes for them or union fees or uh, pretty much anything. And then uh, the owners of the company were taking uh, about 70% of their salaries for housing, food and a commute to work. So they ended up with 20, 30,000 krona per month. And uh, when I've heard about this, I started investigating a little bit more uh, the situation of uh, uh, immigrants just in general on the work market and rental market here in Iceland. And I was petrified because it's essentially slavery. I also have bad experiences. I've been here for 13 years and uh, one of my first jobs was basically in a hotel where uh, majority of the staff was uh, from the Philippines and uh, uh, the owners of the hotels uh, were keeping them literally hostages where they kept their working permits and papers and uh, when I tried to organize a strike within the company uh, most of these people um, just didn't want to show up or just didn't want to do anything because they were threatened to lose their jobs and in consequence their permits to stay in Iceland. So that's, that's a deep-rooted, very long problem, at least for 13 years. It's probably lasting longer. Uh, 
do we uh, do you guys know like the scope of this problem do you know how how big it is is there do you know of any research that has I been done know, into this or i don't know a single person from abroad not only polish per person but just in general immigrant that hasn't been mistreated or cheated by the company they work for yeah uh, there is a Facebook group which is called Away From Home Scammed in Iceland, where people are describing multiple cases, um, especially people who are living outside of Reykjavik. Um, these are cases from small ones, like lack of contract, uh, to big ones, like not having paid uh, over hours, uh, not having paid properly wages, or like having accommodation deducted from your salary, but it's not stated on the pay slips. So basically, whenever they are fighting for their rights as an employee or as a person living as a tenant, they are losing both, both housing and accommodation. And we have to remember that people are coming here out of different reasons, like some of us because we love to travel, some, be some because they have no other choice and they need to earn money uh, in order to go to university. But some are in situations when they have to provide for their families or they are running away from the um, countries where is war, or they, like one of my friends, came here on the boat, which was meant for two people, and there was over 30 of them trying to get to Iceland and um, sailing for 30 days and uh, running away from the people who want to kill them. Because there are, in Kurdistan, law is allowing, for example, a husband to mistreat the wife, and this is the only way to run away. And these people who are here and are um, also exploited, they will not fight for their rights and they will never tell you. So reports are just pointless because uh, for them, it's a matter of to be or not to be. And every conditions which you will provide will be better than what they faced in their countries. So this is basically no choice option. Yeah, because this is kind of uh, what I wanted to come to next, like how about uh, people who find themselves in these conditions, do they have anywhere to, to go to speak about their problems and and are they are they being listened to or? No, it's uh, in most cases people are afraid because they are being threatened by uh, their uh, work providers or uh, people who provide the housing for them. Uh, the moment they complain, they just can end up on the street with no job. And uh, if you have ever been in a situation like that, you know that this is the last thing you want in your life. So you'd rather live in unacceptable conditions, getting paid less than face this type of situation, because we know how the welfare system works in Iceland as well. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Also, you are losing job and you are not from European Union, it means that you will be deported because you can stay here if you have a job. Mm -hmm. The next thing is that uh, basically you often don't know where to go because all the informations are not clearly stated nowhere. To mm -hmm. get to know which institutions reach in order to what situation in your life, you have to really make a research. And what is funny, also my Icelandic friends are saying that they don't know either. It's not that it's not known for foreigners, it's not known for anybody. There is no uh, website where you can find all the links, all the informations about all the charity organizations, institutions. Mm, I believe that there should be collected just a PDF or a website which is provided for everybody who is coming to Iceland, everybody who are applying for Kenitala, and it should be in the five main languages used by minorities here. Polish community is big, we are always supporting each other, but there are also people from countries like Albanians, uh, Filipinos, um, Arabic people, and they often have nobody to translate for them and they don't speak English because if they are coming because they have to search for a better life, they are just jumping on the deep water. Mm. Yeah. Do, do you see any, uh, like, how, how would it be possible to reach these people? What can the government do, for example, to, um, uh, 
Yeah, because I know it's also a, a, a legal complication because if you are illegal as to speak, then mm, uh, it, it term, is kind of... The term is terrible to begin with. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but so, very often they are um, legally here because they are getting um, permission to work mm -hmm. um, and they have work, but whenever they will stand for their rights and will lose their job, then they are becoming illegal, mm -hmm. which shouldn't happen. Because I understand if you are just um, not dedicated to your work and you will lose job because you don't do your job properly, that's fine. But in case if you're exploited and you're fighting for your rights, the law should protect you from deportation. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the, this would, uh, I mean, sorry? It's not only that, sometimes you come from a country which doesn't require any type of um, permits from you to stay in um, Iceland, mainly Europe and Schengen. Uh, and you come here with uh, wide open eyes and you go to work. I know few cases like this already. It's either construction or um, uh, like uh, transportation or the bar slash restaurant business. You start to work somewhere and then the owners or managers don't apply for your Kenitala for a very long time. You cannot even have your bank account because of that. Uh, and then uh, they exploit you for a couple of months without paying your salary. And uh, the moment you start to um, ask for yours, what's yours, they fire you and uh, you have nowhere to turn because uh, your taxes haven't been paid for you, the unions haven't been paid for you, so nobody is really capable of helping you. So these are, there's so many cracks in the system that have been addressed for such a long time and it's like talking to a, shouting at a cloud, pretty much. Yeah, yeah we, need, we need basic information about employees' rights gathered on one website where everybody can easily read it, not in, a, uh, not put it in a legal way, in legal terms, just easily understandable, basic rights. Pamphlet, pretty much. Yes. Pamphlet with all the institutions, whenever, whatever you need, if it's about housing, you go to this uh, department. If it's about your illegal wages, you go to this department. If you don't know, if, if you want to check if the tax is being paid for you, you call Ereskau and such. Because um, a lot of people just don't have the resources or uh, they don't know how to navigate themselves over uh, Icelandic websites with uh, basic or no uh, skills in English, uh, not to mention Icelandic. And uh, yeah, just the access to information should, should be clearer. Yeah. Also, there should be uh, created programs, especially for refugees, which could help adapt to Icelandic society because we all have very different cultural background and um, we could use that to blend in into society. And also, there is lack of immediate help in a crisis situations. This is just unacceptable and it should change. All the institutions should be cooperating together. There should be, um, for example, created, um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to call it in Icelandic, maybe, um, crisis center for intervention intervention because um, my occupation is psychotraumatologist what i'm doing is basically um, reacting in the crisis and telling people who got help in the first hours after trauma happened uh, where to go where to reach for help uh, and i'm trying to make them um, in a bubble that they will be uh, reaching for help from every direction and they will know who will help them in these situations in a long term. So I can't imagine that uh, in these crisis situations, people here have to face so many difficulties and that help is not coming immediately. Yeah, exactly. I have a lot of grievances as well towards, uh, especially uh, towards the Icelandic government. Uh, I made it loud and clear on my social media that uh, 
the reaction or the lack of the reaction from uh, Icelandic Prime Minister to the whole situation is um, not shameful anymore, it's outrageous. In a normal country, a Prime Minister should be the leader of the society and usually they come to the place of the tragedy, they offer help. Uh, they are addressing the, the families and victims and uh, making statements in public. Uh, none of this has happened here. And uh, even though it was known that uh, uh, most uh, of the people that were in this building were from, for example, from the co Polish community, which is the largest uh, by far minority in Iceland and has been for uh, X many years, none of this was important enough for her to uh, to do something about it, to, to show her support, uh, pass on condolences, nothing. It's just so inhumane from her that uh, we are shocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, 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 all there was, was uh, there was a tweet from her about football, right? Yes, on, on uh, it, it looks that uh, um, the football team is more important for her than uh, the fact that people are dying in her country under her government and um, under her negligence, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is, um, I mean, for us also, as uh, you know, I mean, I can speak for myself, I'm, I'm an Icelandic person who has been on the rent market and this is hard enough. So I kind of wanted to uh, get from you, like, how is it being a foreigner on the rent market? Is, is um, it? It's terrible because, um, as I said, uh, as we said both with Kaya, a lot of people don't know their rights. And uh, we know that for last five years, uh, the rent market has been completely devastated by Airbnb. And uh, we all know that you can't really find anything that won't rip a giant hole in your budget monthly. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people are forced into living together in small houses, renting out rooms and just basically um, making do with what they have. And uh, because of the situation on the rent market, it's super hard for them to escape these type of situations that are driving them to live together in crowded spaces. I would like to say that I'm very grateful actually that Icelandic society showed such big support during the manifestation uh, because a lot of us foreigners, we, we think that Icelanders doesn't care. It's not true. You're just more distanced and usually um, you're just more quiet than, than Polish people. Yeah. That's what is making this impression. But this is not true. A lot of Icelanders showed support and it was really, really important to show that we are all in it together, that we are seen as a part of society and that we can contribute in bigger part than only being a workforce, actually. And um, what I wanted to say is that we all have cultural differences and they will not disappear. But we just need to accept it because we are coming to your country and your culture is different and that's okay. But in the moment when we are trying to blend in and we are treated um, worse than others just because we don't speak Icelandic or just because... Um, well, uh, country? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then we are getting job offers which are below our qualifications or uh, we can't compete on the on the market so we are taking basically any other jobs yeah there's a lot of people with uh, lawyers degrees uh, medical degrees that are cleaning offices in this country exactly. and uh, uh, it's such a loss for everyone because when we have educated people in society they can contribute a lot in the in the particular society so if you downgrade them to jobs that don't require their qualifications uh, everyone is losing and um yeah 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 because there, there was um I, I heard there was also um like like for me i mean i came there on sunday and um i mean my experience was just seeing the house kind of 
put it into a frame of reality for me, you know, just imagining those people being in there and having to jump out of windows and, you know, it's just, just seeing it with your own eyes kind of connects you to, to the, um, how horrific it must have been. And I know also the, some of the neighbors of yes. the, um, the, the, the community, like around the house has been Yes, they are very important people in all of this because uh, for many years they have been reporting on that particular house and uh, to no avail. There was nobody listening to them and uh, there was nothing done. Uh, even though Applink was trying to do something for the past year or, or yeah. something like that. Um, they explained to me also that there is a lot of regulations or lack of regulations that are limiting the, the, the work of uh, unions in these cases. But um, yeah, and the, this, this neighborhood actually did a great job. They were first on the place where tragedy happened. They gathered all together to talk about the solutions. And because of this manifestation, I, I was lucky enough to meet Victoria and two other Polish girls who are involved into uh, social problems here. And then we also met uh, these neighborhoods from, from, from the place of tragedy. And we believe that first we need to gather all the issues um, in the housing market and use it as, as examples why um, we need to fight for the changes in the regulations and um, law regarding the long-term rentals because all the hotels all the guest houses, how fire department pointed actually out, um, they have very strict rules and regulations. If it's about long-term rentals, nobody um, put it such in, in place. And the fire department was actually um, saying that it should change. It would be a great idea to just create specialist uh, team for consultations and create procedures and not only for unions, how to help uh, in the same case um, with the same steps, solutions and regulations, but also um, specialists who would consult changes in safety regulations regarding these long-term rentals. And um, why not to use knowledge of this team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there had been a lot of reports, not just on this house, well, on this house particularly, because obviously, <laughs> There was a big reason for um, for action there, but also there have just been reports about people living in these conditions in general, but nobody seems to be doing anything. Yeah, yeah. but like if you are yeah. if you are running a hotel, you have a fire checkup every year. You have to make uh, special signs. You have to have proper evacuation exits. You have to provide proper conditions actually, and you have to have written everywhere. Uh, what should people do in case of fire? There has to be a fire extinguisher in every room accessible. Um, for long-term rentals, it's not existing. And um, what is super sad for me is the fact that um, people who were um, placing those victims of fire in this building were also placing their employees in other places, in other buildings. And that was not checked for five years. Nobody checked other places, even in the hands of this one company. And there is many companies like that, doing things like that. Yeah, and it's not only about uh, fire protection, but also just basic health conditions. A lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, places on the rental market have problem with mold for example, which is super dangerous and uh, nobody's checking on these conditions. So if you are renting out and you report a mold to your landlord, it costs a lot of money to, to, to tear down the walls and, and make everything uh, as it's supposed to be. So usually they just ignore the problem and, uh, and you have no way of verifying this or you have no uh, f first response unit to actually go and report this somehow and uh, make pressure on, on uh, people to fix the problem. So there's a lot of these things. There's a lot of old houses. There's a lot of uh, places that don't, don't fulfill any type of uh, basic 
uh, Western European or just Western country standards. And uh, we agree to this because we don't have any other option. It's just, I really don't like the rhetoric of people who are saying, okay, so why did you even come here? Or, oh yeah, you're an immigrant, so you should expect this type of thing. And uh, I, I think it's outrageous. And um, may, maybe it's because a lot of people don't like to be victimized. It's the victim shaming culture where you don't want to admit that you're a victim of something. And uh, it stops the conversation in the in the root in the society. So uh, you should demand more. You should demand standards. You should demand basic basic things for yourself to be able to function in the society. And um, I blame media a lot as well for um, ostracizing us in. Uh, in the rhetorics. It's always us versus them kind of thing. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big problem because there are so many people from uh, so many countries working on every single platform of society, starting from politics to, to culture, to art, to, to, to societal work of any kind and we're blending in we're learning the language we're you know we're trying to be part of the society and media don't want to notice us they don't they don't want to write anything positive about us what we're doing here how we are influencing the culture and society but every time there is a bad news the first thing they mention is the nationality of a person without even checking facts, just like it happened with the Romanian people. They put everyone in the same bag, even though one person or maybe more wasn't involved in any criminal activity and their name was completely defamed in their own country media. And uh, nobody takes responsibility. Yeah, there was, there, was one, there was one headline that kind of struck me that was uh, in Icelandic, uh, but it was, translates to uh, one of the biggest uh, shocks to the Polish community in Iceland or something like this. Yeah, what about the Icelandic community? What about us? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so, so weird. Uh, and I wanted to ask, in, in, like, how do you guys feel about uh, how the media has been handling this particular Strategy. Well, at the beginning, I noticed that nobody um, checked who is responsible for this. Nobody wants to write the name of the owner of the place. Nobody was writing the name of the company. Uh, that was like a non-existing problem. But the first thing that they wanted to say is that the foreigners live there. I actually understand that they don't mention who is the owner of the building or who is the company who, who put the people there because the investigation is still in process. But I understand what you feel and maybe you just rather wanted to say that they focused on the fact that victims were this and this nationality, that reason of fire might be that, that and that, and uh, that it moved the crowd because of the um, exploitation. But nobody wrote that people who were living in area were reporting bad conditions of the building, bad conditions of living there. And this particular company was on the radars of everybody from five years. And nobody focused on that. What is the root of the, of the things which are so unacceptable, actually? It doesn't matter what was the reason of fire. It doesn't matter who died. We are all people. What matters is that nobody did nothing and all the actions are actually divided on tiny pieces because institutions doesn't cooperate with each other and we need subdisciplinary teams from every institution to be having quarterly meetings to gather all force together and work together because Iceland has a lot of potential. Iceland has a lot of great specialists which they could use. They just need to think how to do that all together. And, and maybe they also need uh, a little bit more uh, power. You know, we have a health inspector who is who can shut down housing. We have the fire department who can shut down houses. But if the owner of the house says, no, you can't come in, they can't go in. 
Exactly. Which is weird it's because, ridiculous. for example, it's not a problem for health department or fire department to not give permission to open restaurants. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, so, you know, restaurant and where people actually live, you know, it's what was the difference? There are people here and here, you know. Yep. Yeah, there was a there was another thing also about this particular building was that there were 75 people registered with their permanent residence there. I mean, that alone yeah. Yeah, yeah, should it, raise suspicion. Absolutely. And also, it's very strange uh, regulation in Iceland that uh, you can actually uh, place your uh, resident address without living in a place. Yeah. So or it's, without, yeah. yeah it's, it's, so you can basically live anywhere. I can just put my address to Besastadir and pretty much nobody's going to check if I'm there or not. And uh, yeah, so this is another loophole in, in also, how is it possible that you are working in uh, some institution and you see in the files that there is 70 people registered under the building address and you are yeah. not shocked you are not surprised you don't start to think about it and yeah. then you would check other buildings where the same company is registering people and you would see that there is 150. like yeah. how is it possible this yeah. is out of my mind totally that you are just doing your job and nothing else bothers you yeah it's very mm -hmm. narrow tunnel vision in most cases in iceland it doesn't matter just like like the 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 conversation about prime minister of iceland having the right to to support her football team after hours so yeah so she's a prime minister from nine to five and then she just doesn't care what's happening in her country, right? And it uh, doesn't matter that she gets paid two million krona a month for this job, you know, <laughs> leave that aside. But uh, it's just the basic, uh, you know, humility and also responsibility for the jobs that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it requires um, a little bit broader vision and more uh, human aspect to whatever you're doing, especially when you're the highest official of a country. Absolutely. It, it also makes you wonder, because if we come back to the, uh, to the uh, residency registration, like if there are 75 people registered at the house that obviously does not hold 75 people, uh, where are these people? Where are these people living? What kind of conditions are they under? And can they just disappear without trace? I mean, who knows? So, do, do you know anything about this? Like, uh, those I people think, for example, people? there was a post on uh, our community uh, page on Facebook. Uh, someone asked that someone left the country without unregistering, and um, uh, they received a paper about some taxes or whatever that was. But just just the fact that uh, some people do leave the country without. Uh, uh, taking themselves out of Tjotskrau and uh, uh, out of the country in general, so... They uh, even don't know that they should do that, actually. Or yeah. they are hearing some gossips that they will lose their rights to Kenitala, like... Which is not such a silly point. thing, because like these are basic informations which everybody should get at the beginning. Yeah. Like, I was uh, in um, last few years working here responsible for hiring people, and um, everybody who I hired, I spent around one hour to explain them what is Kenitala, how to apply for it, what are their rights, that there are unions, that there is um, a retirement fund, that there is second retirement fund, all these basic informations. They should get it at the beginning. They yeah. should get it right away. When well, they apply for Kenitala, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so this is, this is what is greatly lacking, just information. Yes, for people who are new. Yeah. Because if you would have strings which are connected together, then you have tight nest and it's super easy then to help everybody. And you actually have all the institutions, you just need to connect them. Yeah, most of the time people don't want to be uh, guided by the hand, you know, we just need to give them tools and they will be fine with on their own. If they only know where to go, look for help, uh, they'll be fine on their own. But that's the problem. There is no support information, you know, 
where they can go for in case of travel. And also there should be, um, we're actually starting a foundation that is going to uh, help people in, um, in cases where they have been uh, cheated, mistreated by the employers to seek for their legal rights whenever unions are tight. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is going to be very helpful is to create some kind of a institution um, for people who are afraid of reporting something about their um, landlords or uh, employers. Yeah. Where they can actually go and seek for help anonym, anonym, uh, anonymously and yeah. uh, like an yeah. post mothers. Exactly. Yeah. Also, yeah. I personally believe that there should be hired a person who will be uh, checking on unions because mm -hmm. there is multiple cases when people are going to unions and asking for help and they are receiving from every employee uh, employer uh, employee of the union totally different information. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's creating chaos and confusion and they are just more lost than when they reach for help. Mm -hmm. Also, very often uh, the steps are taking way too long. There are cases for two years. And I would understand if that would be such a complicated case. But for example, there are simple cases described on this county in Iceland group where people are coming, showing Kloina settlers, somebody's calculating, oh, this company really didn't pay you for over hours. They own you this and this amount of money. During these two years, uh, this person have to be calling and coming all the time to receive the help. And then uh, after these two years, they are hearing also they are uh, offering you settlement. Uh, you would get 50% of what they own you. Why? What kind of settlement is that? <laughs> Why? So uh, I believe that there should be a person who is um, responsible for that to be checking uh, union actions because if I would be in such position and I would turn into my union for help I would like to believe that everything have to, uh, what have to be done will be done and I don't have to be worried about it anymore because these are these people who I should trust yeah. and if nothing is done then I can always reach that person above and ask for help there because in this moment now if union will not help you, you have nowhere to go. You are just done. Your case is over. You have to just deal with that. Just accept it. And let's not um, trick ourselves. We are all humans. We are working like that, that to our friends, we, of course, are more kind and understandable. And in Iceland, everybody knows everybody. So very often, people who are um, employers and are being reported, are friends of somebody from from the institution which is supposed to help yeah we, we can only imagine yeah yeah and um and uh, I, I can imagine it's it's kind of um, hard also to even if there is a some kind of an institution that we can set up to you know for these people to look to how will they know about its existence uh, exactly yeah. I mean, uh, at some point, everyone is having a bank account on Iceland. I think that banks should be uh, a part of the information net as well. The moment you get, uh, you know, your, all your papers with, uh, with your bank account, here's a pamphlet where to go in case someone is vi violating your workers' rights. Like, you have rights because people don't know, you know, it's not that obvious to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Because even if you, you, you know, you at least have your human rights, which should be to be treated fairly and equally. Exactly. And, yes, um, and uh, just having a safe home is one of the basic human rights. Absolutely. Yeah, and food to eat. So. Um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But let's imagine situation that this fire is happening, which happened a few days ago, uh, and we have created team for the crisis situations. Who is on the spot? is taking care of the housing, tempor uh, temporary housing immediately for them, is telling them, okay, so next steps will be, we'll go here, here, here to do this, 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 and this, investigation will be in process. There is no need of manifestation. There is no need of the neighborhood community to support uh, and provide food, cosmetics. There is no need of Polish charity 
who will also focus only on Polish people. Let's not let's not uh, be here um, naive and don't think that they have time to take care of all the nations here. And there is a lot of people here who doesn't have such a big society group. If we would only focus on the solutions, this could be avoided. Absolutely. Just like in this particular situation, uh, the only safety net for for uh, for these people are basically uh, people that should not be doing the job that they're doing at the moment. Let's face it. Some some of us are losing our personal life for this case. As to you know, give you a, a picture of what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of people that uh, are helping out in this case and they are absolutely exhausted at this point because they uh, just juggle multiple um, disciplines be um, between themselves. So some people are uh, starting from psychologists to, to, to translators to, to whatever you can imagine. Uh, there is nobody to represent the people you know who were directly affected and this is why i'm angry at the government of iceland that didn't provide this type of first aid kit you know that's there this is pretty much, i blame them on the situation because you can't talk about uh, um, an accident after five years of reporting same thing over and over again about a house that could catch on fire any day. So it's not an accident, let's face it. And you could see it from the outside. I mean, it was nothing. You, you didn't have to go into this house to see that there, there was no fire escape. There's uh, only one way out. There's a huge piece missing of the uh, outside uh, yeah, it was a Wall cardboard thing. box, let's face it, yes. you know, collapsing cardboard box. And people who are yeah. specialists in, uh, in uh, architecture, in construction, were also reporting that. And they are professionals who are reporting that. Yeah. Uh, we have to uh, start to think about closing the show soon, but I wanted to ask you, uh, I wanted to ask about, I, I heard what you think, Victoria, about the government's responses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to ask if, if you've looked at responses from like ISE and the unions and, and what you guys think about what they have been saying now. So I just came back today from a meeting with the unions and uh, they want to cooperate uh, with, um, with the community of, um, of the neighbors and also uh, would like to engage more people uh, from the Polish community that know more about the situation. They want to check more houses and uh, there is a mobilization in them as I see. I'm going to see tomorrow the uh, president of uh, ASE also. I'm, I'm guessing she will want to speak about the same things. And uh, I know that there is a lot of will from some of the uh, employers of um, uh, Applink and uh, uh, ASC, uh, but there is a lot of work to be done in for both. Me, for me, uh, this is all focusing on the situation right now and the problem which happened, and this is totally awesome. And uh, I, I'm happy that you are in and um, that they invited you, it's super nice move. And I think that it's super, super important. It has to start somewhere, but I would focus also on longer uh, issues, yeah. to complete all the procedures to, to make them very clear for yeah. every employee of the union so they could help the best how they can, and how they are able to, uh, because now regardless their intentions, this help which should be provided to people is not possible. And I'm not focusing only on what happened. This was just the last, last drop, like I said, and yeah. I would like uh, changes to happen in the next two years. That's realistic plan. It's totally doable. It just requires people to start thinking wider. Yeah. Well, yeah, well I think those are, I think those are great final words. Uh, 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 Kaya and Victoria, uh, thank you very much for joining us.
very much. It was absolutely great to hear from you, and we will uh, hopefully be in contact later uh, if we have any other things to talk about. Or Löve, thank you for being with me today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we are. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are here on Samstone every Tuesday and Friday. We have and a lot of other shows there. And just thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.